Hi hey guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. What we're doing today is a small tutorial on making a foraging hook out of an old spear. You can buy one of these from the tackle shop or just ask around on a Facebook page, you'll find one. Or you could use a piece of stainless wire or thick bar, about a quarter of an inch thick. That'll be strong, plenty strong enough. You're not lifting rocks with this. The idea of it is when you can't reach the lobsters with your hand, you can get this and tickle behind them and get them out. And same goes for any sort of crab, really. So stay tuned. I'll give you the run through of how I make this. Woo! What I've got for a handle, it's just an old piece of wood from an old gaff. You can use anything, really. You can carve your own. Just get a little bit of two by two, like I did with my old foraging hook. And you can just make a handle. I like the handle to be really thick. Because if it's really skinny, it gives you cramp in your hand. So, nice thick handle, like so. I'm probably going to cut this down a little bit more. So we get to that, and we'll show you the next step. So that's my handle all cut down now. It's about a good four inches long now. Otherwise, if it's too long, it just gets in the way of things. And what I'm going to do is give this a quick sand down. I want this quite smooth. <clears throat> I've had a bit of a cold lately, so mind my coughing or a bit of splurging. And what I'm going to do is sand this nice and smooth now and get my hole drilled straight through it. So that's it, fairly smooth now. And what I've got to do is I don't have to be too fussy on the uh, sanding wise. All I'm going to do with this is soak it in oil to stop the uh, salt water damaging it too much. So what the next step is, let's get the drill and uh, I'm going to drill a hole straight through the bottom. So the drill bit, when you're choosing your drill bit, you want it a little bit bigger than what the actual tube is, just so this part's nice and tight. And at the bottom, we're going to be drilling a much bigger hole. And that will become apparent as the video goes on. What you're doing, get it nice and tight in the vise. Just so you can see straight down it to get it as accurate as you can. I already started it with the other drill bit and it was blunt, so I had to change. <laughs> and all I'm doing is going straight down. About halfway through and then I'm going to flip it and do exactly the same the other side till the both holes meet up. So that's the hole drilled out now. There we go, straight through it. And what I'm going to do is put the back end of it back in the vise and get a much bigger drill bit. There we go. So you can see that's the one we started from the end with. So the bar, when it goes through, it's a nice nice fit. But at the end, because we're, we're creating sort of an overall shape to stop the, the uh, hook twisting, that's why we need a much bigger hole. There we go, so we quickly drop this out. There we go, beautiful. And what that does just allows me to put the uh, resin right in and I can soak the whole lot in there. So once it's all glued together, there's going to be no, no slippage, no cracks. And this thing will last absolutely years. As for the bar, what you want to do is get rid of all of these weak points where the notches are for the bands. So you want to take these off completely. And same goes for the flappy bit at the end. You want to get rid of all of that so you're left with a straight stainless steel bar. Hence the reason you can use just a quarter inch stainless steel bar from the shop. It'll work equally as good, as long as it's not too flexible, it'll be fine. 
So I'm going to get these cut off now and I'll show you how I heat and bend this. There we go. That's cut at a 45 degree angle. All I'm going to do is just take all the burrs off and then I'm going to cut the end straight. Always be careful doing this stuff. If you're a child or a young person, just get an adult to help you. And what I'm going to do now is just get the, uh, the file out. Just going to file out all the edges so there's no sharp edges that I can cut myself. Then I'm going to start bending it. And as you can see, this is going to be quite a long foraging hook and that's what I wanted I wanted one longer than the uh, the one I've already got that's it all filed down now good thing about this you know as you've seen in some of the foraging videos we use this quite a lot just to get right behind the holes and just to wiggle out the lobsters you know you can get some really big lobsters out the back of some of the big holes you know especially on the really low tides so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat this up with the old Bunsen burner and then we're going to create our loop. So we're going to get on that now. What I'm doing now is using my cooker just to heat up the metal, making it easier to bend. Be extra careful doing this. And what I'm doing is I want a small loop on the end of this. So heat it up till it's glowing, making it a lot more easier to bend. A hell of a lot more easier. Start bending it a little bit. You just want it in just an inch. And as you can see, it's a lot more easier to bend when this thing is scalding hot. If you do it when it's cold, you're going to struggle like how. The idea is just to keep heating it up really hot and just keep wrenching it round. Good job, it's a blunt axe. <laughs> The last thing you want to do is go stabbing yourself, so everyone be very careful doing this. If you're going to make one, make sure you've got some precautions. That's as far as I can bend it with that at the moment. So as you can see, we've got it almost flat and what I'm going to do now is hammer it so it goes straight down and then that will be our clog inside the handle. Metal hammer with me and all I'm doing is going to try and bend this round. Watch your eyes. There we go, that's exactly how we want that and that will create a block inside the uh, handle to stop it to stop it twisting out or cracking inside. It's the last thing you want to do, you want this to be lasting for a long time. So that's the spear all bent over now. What I've done is slotted the handle on and that fits inside just like so, creating a nice strong handle. And the idea is to keep the handle on when you bend this end. Otherwise you're not going to get it on afterwards. So what I'm going to do is bend this one quickly. So that's the hook all bent now. As you can see the angle on the bar originally it creates a nice hook to start pulling lobsters out with. It's only about two inches wide. You don't need nothing big. So it's just so you can get right into the holes and just pluck them out. Same as the, the uh, spider crabs. 
lady crabs, brown crabs, anything really, for the handle to sit it in place, ready for gluing. All I'm doing, bring you guys over a little bit, is I'm wedging it in a spot where the actual hook is straight with the handle, then I've got a wedge to put in the end. There we go. Make sure it's pulled right down. And you put your wedge in. There we go. Get that right up there. And this just stops the glue coming out and you can just cut it off after. And all we do now is I've got some casamite, some structural glue. But you can use epoxy, five minute epoxy, anything really. And all you're doing is filling up the handle. All I'm doing is going to get it in the vise, nice and tight. And you can fuss with the handle after. And what I've done is mixed up my casamite, or like I say, you can use any sort of uh, epoxy glue or resin. That'll work fine. This stuff just goes off like a rock, so that's the only reason I use it. And all I'm doing is just filling up the hole. And I want this to soak right through. So that's all it is. All I've got to do now is just let that set, let it soak down. As you leave it for a little bit, the air will come through and you can just keep topping it up. This stuff takes about 20 minutes to go rock hard, so it's not going to take long. What I've done now is just made a gauge out of a piece of plastic. I've got lobster, orma, shanker and lady crab. Just so then we're not getting our, our sizes mixed up. And all I'm doing is popping that straight in to the glue. And I want that really deep in there. And that will set round it. And then it's not going anywhere. It's always handy to have the gauges with you. Because you never know what you're going to find really. Especially when the abalone season come along. Or ormers. You'll definitely uh, be thanking that one. Nice. So we'll leave that to set now. And once that's all set, I'll show you the finished product. For the final parts now, all I like to do is get a load of oil. This can be olive oil, anything really. And what it does is if you give it a few coats, it protects it from the water a little bit more. Makes the wood last so much longer. Just oiling it a few weeks before a trip. When you first make them, give them a good three or four coats of it. And that will make sure the handle lasts a very long time. As you can see, I've got a stainless steel screw into the wood with the string. So then, that over the years, there's no way of that coming out. That's the gauge for different sorts of uh, crustaceans and abalone. So that's the foraging hook, all finished up. As you've seen, it's a little bit longer than this one. And a little bit more, less clutter on it. You don't have to have the buoyancy. But as long as you've got something bright so you can see it in the seaweed, it's happy days. That's nice and strong. As you heat this up and you're bending it and stuff, this will get a lot stronger as it cools down. You heat it up, cool it down, and eventually like, it becomes to the point where you can lift rocks with these. So I hope you, you enjoyed this one, guys. Hopefully you can get a few lobsters in the holes with it. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to trying this. Sam will probably be using this in up-and-coming foraging videos. So stay tuned. If you like my channel, like and subscribe. There's plenty more to come. It's Smash Fishing.